we are going to take a look at all of the newest features that are available in Lightroom. So what I would like to show you is the new HDR feature in Lightroom. That stands for high dynamic range. And in the context of photography, it just means a scene or a photo that has very bright areas and very dark areas. And of course, our eyes can see a much greater range of brightness values than the camera can capture. So when we want to really faithfully capture a scene, we'll often take multiple exposures so that we can get the detail in the darks and get the detail in the lights, and then we'll squish them together into one photo. Select those exposures and go to Photo, Photo Merge, HDR Merge, and it will combine those three exposures into a single exposure. Here it is. Screens that are capable of displaying HDR values are becoming more and more common. We can actually start to display these HDR photos in HDR without needing to tone map them down to SDR space. It's really, really cool. And guess what? If I want to edit a photo in HDR, I need to start with a photo that has some kind of HDR content. That does not have to be a file that you've created for multiple exposures using Merge to HDR. That's what I've done here. But even a single RAW file has a lot of overhead in it that uh, you know an SDR monitor can't display. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the HDR button to turn on HDR editing for this photo. Even if you're on an HDR display right now, you're not gonna be able to see HDR because this stream that's coming into you, it's not HDR. If you were here with me looking at this screen, you'd be like, oh my gosh, that looks so much better. You gotta trust me on that one. Let me turn HDR back off and you can see the histogram change as I turn HDR on and off. So you see this center line here. Everything to the left of that, that's the SDR range. And everything to the right of that line, this is the HDR range of the histogram. The parts that are highlighted light are the parts of the HDR range that my monitor that I'm on right now is currently capable of displaying. Each one of these lines, these dotted lines, doo -doo -doo, that's a stop. So this is one stop above UI white. This is two stops above, three stops above, and so on. As I brighten my screen up, you'll see that what it can display above UI white goes down because I am raising the value of UI white as I brighten my screen up. In general, any screen that can display a thousand nits of brightness or more is a good screen uh, for working in HDR. All of the edit controls work the same in HDR or SDR. Curve is a little bit different. So this lower left quadrant, this is the SDR section of the curve. And then all of this is all this extra room that you get now that you're editing in HDR. If you just want to export this to send it somewhere else, of course, you go up here to a little share icon, go to export custom settings. There's JPEG XL. And when I go to JPEG XL, I have HDR output as an option. Also newly added format is AVIF, which you can also opt in to including HDR. And then if you export as JPEG, that will also include the HDR info. There is no opt-in checkbox here. It's just, if it's there, if you've edited this photo in HDR and you export as JPEG, it'll be HDR. If you wanna share these out, JPEG is probably actually the best format to use. It includes all the HDR info and it includes what's called a gain map, which translates between the SDR rendition of the photo and the HDR rendition of the photo. It means that you can control what your photo looks like to someone who is viewing it on an HDR screen and what it looks like to someone who's viewing it on an SDR screen. I have this SDR settings controls here. I can expand that and I can turn on this checkbox for preview for SDR display. And that will show me right now on my screen what the photo is gonna look like to someone who views this on an SDR screen, someone who doesn't have HDR capabilities. And then I can go ahead and control what that SDR rendition looks like. So that's super, super cool. The behavior of the clipping indicators changes a little bit uh, when you're in HDR editing versus SDR. But the yellow areas are areas that are brighter than UI white, which my screen can currently display. And the areas that are red are areas that are brighter than UI white that my screen can't currently display. And you see that represented up here under the histogram as well. I'll show you visualize HDR as well. If you wanna see how many stops above UI white different areas in the image are, you can turn that on. It color codes them. You see the corresponding colors under the histogram, one stop above UI white, two stops and so on. And one last HDR control, you can limit 
how many stops above UI white your image contains. Why would you want to do that? Well, um, if you know, for example, that you're going to be displaying to a particular screen that only allows, you know, three stops above UI white, you might want to limit right here to three stops above. I'm going to switch over to my phone here. HDR uh, editing is available on the phone as well. Most of the editing that you can do on the computer and the phone, you can also do in your web browser, which is kind of crazy. Here's where this is really useful, is when you're sharing. You share this photo out to social media, it doesn't display HDR but Lightroom Web will display HDR. For any album that I've created in Lightroom, I can turn on sharing for that album. I can get a shareable link that allows anybody to go and see this album in their web browser. And if I've edited a photo in HDR, they will see it in HDR. They need to be on an HDR screen. And the second caveat is they need to be using a browser that supports HDR. And currently that basically means Chrome. Let's talk about the next new feature that's available in Lightroom. This is the new point color feature in Lightroom. And this is really cool. So you You'll find it in the color panel. This is like color mixer on steroids. In point color, it's like three dimensions in, three dimensions out. So I can select on the basis of both hue, saturation, and luminance. And then I can adjust each of those three things as well. I've got this picture here. Let's say I'm looking at this yellowish grass and I wish that it was greener. By the way, pro tip, hold down option on the Mac, Alt on Windows, and the panel headers change to say reset and you click them and it'll reset the whole panel. I'll go ahead and I'll click on this little eyedropper tool here. So I'll click on the color I wanna work with. Okay, there it is right there. And now I'm gonna do my hue shift. I wanna make it greener. So I'm gonna shift the hue more towards green. First, you can see, okay, it's showing me what it started with and where I moved it to. Second, I'm still affecting like a lot of the image. I can change the range of colors that are being affected. If I turn the range up, it's affecting more and more colors. If I turn it down, it's affecting fewer. Turn down triangles, so handy. Let's click that. Okay, this is showing me where my selected color started and where I moved it to, but also when I change the range, it's showing me the bounds of the colors that are being affected by the change. But what if that's still not enough? What if I want to get really fiddly with it? I can click the turn down triangle. This allows me to really precisely specify exactly the hue, saturation, and luminance of the color that I want to target here. So I can change that like that, right? To change which hue I'm targeting. But then I can move these handles in to really narrow the range down. So I'm targeting only only a very small amount of the hue. So if I click visualize range, it shows me in color, that's the part that's that I've selected that's being targeted and the black and white parts are not being affected. So look at how I'm changing that grass so dramatically, but it's sure it's right. staying the same color Super now. Super targeted, yeah. Right? You can have eight of these color swatches. Wow. So I'm just, just using one right now to target the grass, but if I wanted to do something different with this blue, Boop, 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 boop. Now I'm working on this one. And if I want to go back and work on this one, I can do that. You can use this in masking as well. You can see that this sort of yellowy green of the helicopter is really bouncing onto her. So I'm going to go into masking. I want to select just her skin, detecting people. OK, great. It found her. So I'm going to go ahead and click on her and masking there. And I'm going to select just the parts of her that I want, which in this case is facial skin. And actually, I think I'm going to her hair, too. So I'll go ahead and click Create. I've got that mask, and now I can edit just this area of the photo. So I'll go ahead and click my eyedropper, and I'll click on her kind of yellowy, greeny yeah, you skin can there. Just see it. Now I'll just take that hue down. I'll do be a little bit extreme here right now, but you can see not affecting the rest of the photo. So I took this picture with my phone, and I want to show you a new feature called lens blur. Of course, my wife and daughter are the part of the photo that I care about, but I've got all of these like pretty well in focus distracting elements in the background. Click on the apply checkbox. So you can see the background has dropped out of focus. Very nice. I have a blur amount slider here where I can control how much out of focus the background is. All these little blurred out highlights in the background, of course, that's called bokeh. And we love to be super particular about what our bokeh looks like. Well, turn down triangle. Click that, you can change the shape and style of the bokeh. 
in the background. That's cool. By default, it focuses on the subject, whatever the subject might be. It uses AI to identify the subject in the photo, but I can change that. I can click on this little crosshair icon and I can click on the photo on the part that I want to be in focus and it'll set the focus oh, there. Oh, that's pretty cool. I don't have to just use this like focus on my subject button or focus where I click button. I can drag my focal plane forward and backward through the image. I can change the depth of field as well. So the little circle there in the center, that's the focal plane. And then I'm, I have focus falling off out to either of these handles here. So if I want to make the um, depth of field bigger, I can drag those handles out. And if I have the visualized depth turned on while I drag this, the part that it highlights in white, that's the part that's in focus. I can refine the depth map. So again, I'll click my turn down triangle. I've got a bunch of controls here. These are just brush size controls for my focus brush or my blur brush. And then this is the amount. I can get my blur brush and brush over it vice versa with the focus brush. Here in the upper left corner, there is now a cloud tab and a local tab. Hey. So what do I have here? Basically on the left, it gives me a file browser. I'm gonna click on this folder, China trip, and it shows me these photos that are in that folder on my desktop. Not only can I work on stuff now in Lightroom without syncing it to the cloud, I don't even need to import it. Double click it, here I go. Here's all of my edit controls. This is really, really neat. Okay, so I'm gonna go into masking here. You know, we have all this AI masking, we have all different kinds. When you step into a person, of course, you can select different attributes of the person, right? Like you're a portrait photographer, you wanna get skin looking really nice. So you'd maybe create a mask for the facial skin, you'd say create, and then you would do some really subtle edits. You'd probably take down texture a little bit, maybe you'd shift hue a little bit. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna do something super noticeable. We're gonna to pretend together that this is really beautiful, tastefully done skin smoothing that I did. And then I have like 50 other photos from the same session that I want it on. Now that we have these AI masks, I want to copy settings from this photo. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to choose edit settings to copy. I want only the masking. I've selected these three other photos that have people in them. Command V to paste. There we go. Yeah, and now it's pasted favorite. my skin smoothing onto all of my other photos. It's an incredible way to speed up batch workflows in Lightroom using AI masks. So really, really cool. That's all the new stuff, the newest, newest, new as of Mac stuff that I had to share and talk about. Thank you so much for joining us. You're a wealth of knowledge, my friend. Thank you. Thank you also to everybody who tuned in. Hey, have a good one. Bye.